I am pumped for this video. This might be one of the more practical, stealable videos that I've ever created. And we're gonna unpack three really simple online energizers and icebreakers that you can do in any context. And the reason I feel comfortable saying any context is two reasons. One, I'm actually gonna break the video down into three categories. So, you know, you think about, I don't know your group, your, the reason you landed on this video, your intention for wanting to lead an energizer and icebreaker. And so I've recorded this in three separate categories that allows you to pick and choose what will be the most useful and the most impactful energizer or icebreaker um, for your group. And so here are the categories and you'll actually see them labeled in the scroll bar if you hover over it. It'll actually say, it'll be chunked into purple, green and blue, that's right. So energizers and icebreakers that encourage some level of self-reflection, some that are fun and light, and some, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper, um, that can be useful as well. Now, for each of these, I don't think that energizers are the same as icebreakers. To be honest, I was inspired to create this video after watching this video from The Magic Sauce, um, where he unpacked three really great icebreakers. Feel free to go watch it at some point. And I think that um, what I wanted to do is create a little bit more of a flexible option so that you could pick and choose. So you may have shown up for three, but you will leave with six because I don't think energizers are the same thing as icebreakers. And so for each of these three categories, I'm gonna share one of my favorite exercises that I would categorize as an icebreaker and one of my favorite exercises that is categorized as an energizer. My name is Chad Littlefield. I'm the co-creator of this nifty connection toolkit, which is designed to amplify connection, belonging, and trust, and is loaded up with 100 plus exercises, ideas, etc., to help make connection engagement really easy for you. And it's being used by leaders and educators all around the world. And by the end of our time here, what is in my brain will be in your brain. As we get into this, by the way, feel free to just pick one and go run with it, but also feel free to experiment with all six, right? These could begin the next six monthly meetings that you have, all right? So take a note of each one as we go and perhaps schedule it into right into your calendar to experiment with it because I, I do think that experience is by far the best teacher on the planet. I'd like to think that I work pretty hard to present really useful practical information in a concise format and nothing teaches better than actually doing an exercise, realizing what works, what resonates with your group and refining it and adapting it, right? Each one of these things that I'm gonna share, you can edit to fit your own group. And in fact, I would invite you to ruthlessly reinterpret everything that I say and share here. Let's start with green. I'm gonna go with energizer first. And this really uh, simply is, I, I sometimes think energizers should move a little bit more quickly. Right? Uh, whereas icebreakers, I think really good icebreakers, and I actually prefer the word connection, phrase connection before content, but I think really good energizers move more quickly, whereas icebreakers create some time for thought and actual connection rather than like superfluous uh, goofiness. So for this one, I'm still gonna utilize questions, but as people log on to Zoom as an unofficial start even as an energizer, I might say, what is something you've always wanted to learn? And drop a quick, commentary or explanation in the chat for that. And then invite people to go to the chat, find something they haven't learned, unmute and ask about it. And the reason this, I would categorize this as an energizer is one, it moves pretty quick, right? The chat's kind of buzzing, um, but also it's really energizing to hear multiple people's voice in the first few minutes of a Zoom call where typically there's lots of context setting, the leader speaks for a while, somebody reports something out, as opposed to boom, 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 you've heard five different larynxes say something. And that to our ears is just activating. It energizes our brain audibly to hear a bunch of different voices. And so simply ask a question like this, what's something you've always wanted to learn is an easy one. You can also ask a question that kind of fits the theme of your meeting. Um, so if you're talking about the impact you're creating, talking about something kind that somebody's done for you uh, recently, could be useful as well. Now, remember, we're still staying in the fun and light category. So bringing this from an energizer to an icebreaker, I would invite you to do breakouts. So take the same questions, but split people out and invite them to share. I do think that online and in Zoom, alphabetical order saves lives in breakouts, just to avoid like who goes first, who goes next, 
just go in alphabetical order by first name, give the group 10 seconds or so to think of their own response to either one of these questions, and then break out, have a conversation, come back and popcorn a couple thoughts about what just happened. I know that simply asking a question and answering the chat or doing breakouts is not sexy or like amazing or gamified in any sort of way as far as a icebreaker energizer goes. I do think that questions are the lowest hanging fruit, simplest low prep, way to create meaningful connection. And for me, icebreakers should create meaningful connection. All right, bumping up to purple, encouraging some level of self-reflection. So this is for all my introverts in the world. In fact, we created this, uh, this color code comes from a deck of cards I created called We Connect Cards, which is packaged in that connection toolkit that I showed you earlier. Um, and a free digital version of the Connection Toolkit is available um, in the link below, by the way, if you wanna just steal these questions and take screenshots or uh, put them into presentations or turn them into virtual backgrounds, you can do that. But the reason that we uh, put purple cards in there to encourage some level of self-reflections is to give a big hug and some love to the introverts in the world because typically the words icebreaker and energizer give introverts hives or a very unhealthily high heartbeat. And so I think activities that encourage some level of pause and self-reflection and aren't really extrovert friendly are immensely useful at energizing a group because you know that the like formal Myers-Briggsy definition for introversion and extroversion is where you gain your energy from. So for extroverts, uh, you might gain your energy from going out and meeting a bunch of new people. For introverts, you might regain energy from being at home in a totally quiet house reading a book or engaging in one really deep, meaningful conversation with somebody else rather than this crazy little social butterfly group dynamic. And so for the energizer at the purple level, I'm gonna suggest you do some collaborative live journaling. And what I mean by that is, hold up a question that encourages some level of self-reflection or type a question into the chat that encourages some level of self-reflection and play a song, specifically instrumental, no words, so just a nice light kind of chill song for two to four minutes and invite people to live journal their response to these questions. And then after that song ends, have people press enter and submit that little mini journal entry into the chat and then play another song that might be a little bit more upbeat and invite people to scroll up and learn. Scroll up and learn about their colleagues, learn about the other students. This collaborative live journaling idea is a way to have like 50 conversations in the span of five minutes. Whereas typically, you know, breakouts, you get one conversation, you hear from two people. We can uh, usually read and scroll and scan a lot faster than we can speak and listen. And so not only is um, this a really introvert friendly exercise, it's also extremely energizing for the whole group because you learn so much. And so, so many connections get illuminated in such a short period of time when you do an exercise like this. The second one is an exercise that I used to run in person all the time and it's called Me To We. And super simple, I typically invite people, I'd lay out the We Connect cards on a table, I invite people to grab a card that they would like to answer and then go leave the room, leave the space, go find a corner to sit in, hang out in, lay down on the couch and just reflect reflect for five minutes on their answer to that question, right? So this is kind of a deep question, right? How would I like to be remembered? And so just take a minute, take a pause, get away from the screen in an online context, right? It's one of the most powerful things we can do to energize a group and break the ice is to get people to leave their LCD screens and then come back recharged a bit. And so um, this idea of me to we is um, kind of channels the wisdom of brainstorming 101, which is uh, brainstorm alone first and together second. And so me just reflecting and then like Gandhi or Buddha in the wilderness, uh, bring your wisdoms back to the group. So bring whatever you thought back to the group and then you might split people out into breakouts to have some conversation just to answer their question. And you can have people, you can send people a link to the digital version of the cards and they can pick out their own question so that everybody's answering a question that they want to rather than one that you've 
held up and chosen for them. All right, we're dropping it down blue. Blue cards are have questions on them that go a little bit deeper. And so the energizer and exercise here, the intention is to uh, energize and break the ice with depth. And I think um, particularly for the energizer component, the thing that I've seen in my own language facilitating workshops and keynotes for tens of thousands of people, I have a very specific phrase or a couple phrases that I say to energize a group and invite some of the, the critics and the people that are on the sidelines like, eh, I'm not so sure about this whole like activity thing, right? I have a, a few particular phrases that I use to energize that group to be a little bit more bought in, a little bit more excited to the experiment. And experiment is very important. I know the title of this video says uh, three simple online energizers and icebreakers. I would not use the words energizer or icebreaker ever with a group. I would also not use the word activity. With a group that's got some people with their arms crossed, I would absolutely use the word experiment. So what we're gonna do right now is an experiment to dive in and un blah, 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 whatever your framing is. So that's, that's uh, framing number one, is called an experiment, because people are a little bit more intrigued, the scientists in the room who might be a little more skeptical, are a little bit more intrigued in testing something out rather than doing whatever cheeky activity you have planned for them. And then the second piece of framing that I find really energizes a group is reminding people of one of my favorite features of questions. And I've thought a lot about questions, right? Will and I wrote a book called Ask Powerful Questions, Create Conversations That Matter. So I've thought a lot about the structure and the wording and the intention behind questions and the way questions are listened to. And one of the things that I love so much about questions is that they are like a key that unlocks something inside our lifetime of ungoogleable experience. But unlike a key to your car, they're more like a janitor's or a master key that unlocks multiple doors. So even if I were to hold up a question as intense as this, what is your greatest struggle right now? You could answer that question by saying, um, it's snowing outside, I live in Pittsburgh and I have to shovel again. <laughs> I could also, answer this same question by telling you that I'm really struggling with balancing being a dad to a very cute little man and being a husband to an amazing, fantastic human being and wife and also being an entrepreneur whose business is sort of exploding in a lot of ways. I'm having a trouble balancing those three things. And so you see how same question, different level of depth. And so the, the tip here, or the way to energize a group, I would say is to literally, in whatever icebreaker question you're gonna start out with, give them that framing. Remind them that they have 100% complete autonomy and choice in how they answer every single question. And what you'll get is people like, getting a little like breath of like, confidence, courage, something. And typically 95% of the time, people will choose the more honest, true, real, vulnerable, authentic route. And that's really useful if you're trying to break the ice. Switching from this energizing framing to icebreaker at this level of depth, I would invite you to rip up any, these are durable, uh, rip up any question. That's it, I can only go two rips in. Uh, rip up any template question that you've found and come up with a totally custom tailored question that fits your content and your group best. And I will say that the absolute best one is actually to crowdsource your icebreaker questions from the group. And so let's say you've got a team of 12, invite every single one of them to generate three questions in a Google Doc on sticky notes and pick one to do at every weekly meeting for the next 12 times three year. Right? And you can come up with an entire year's worth of connection questions that were crowdsourced from the group. Now I would invite people, um, really great icebreaker questions tend to begin with either the words how or what. Every single one of the 60 questions in uh, the deck of We Connect cards starts with either how or what because it avoids judgment, it tends to create open-ended answers as opposed to quick closed responses where you don't get much story or data or context. And so I um, invite people to come up with three questions that they would love to ask the group over the course of the year that begin with either how or what. 
And that's it. You've got your depth filled energizers and icebreakers planned for a whole good bit of time. One more thing, I would invite you to check out this video on how to have a conversation without asking questions. Bit of an odd topic, but in it, I unpack probably the most essential and important part of really good connection activities. And it is how we use these ears, these appendages on the side of our head. I'm Chad Littlefield, lovely hanging out in cyberspace. I do think that you rock. Have an awesome day.